Danny. How's it going? Hey, how are you? Great. How are you? Doing well. Thank What's you. going on? Not a whole lot, man. Thanks so much for doing this. Yeah, of course. So our podcast is all about your journey in the music industry and how you got to where you are now. Cool. Sweet. Amazing. Um, yeah, so we'll talk about you know your songwriting and then obviously the new project you have. Uh, mo um, Model Child. Yeah, Model Child. Yeah. That's cool. it. Sweet. So tell me, where'd you grow up, Danny? I grew up in Virginia, Virginia. Uh, kind of the outskirts of D.C. Okay. Have you heard yeah. of Fairfax County? I have not heard of Fairfax County. Where, where are you from? Originally? We're in San Diego, L uh, South L.A. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. So you grew up um, in Virginia area? Yeah, so kind of just like maybe 30 minutes outside of DC. Right on. How did you get into music? Uh, oh God, let's see. Um, I mean, I was always like a huge fan growing up. Um, I remember like, like my mom just like driving me around to sports and like my sister's dance classes or whatever. And she would play uh, a lot of like doo-wop um, and just like classic rock kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. like the oldies and I was just kind of obsessed um and then I played trombone in like fifth grade and oh, like the band uh, school band yeah I did school okay. band and and then like played a little piano and let's see I don't know ended up just like getting super obsessed with it um friends introduced me to like some punk stuff uh some grunge and then kind of the gateway into playing in a band was uh through trombone actually i really wanted to play but i didn't play uh like guitar bass like what i thought mm -hmm. you would need to play to play in a band sure um and so i met these guys on like a band trip um to myrtle beach and uh they were looking for a horn player to play in their ska band so oh wow yeah yeah so it was super sick so that was kind of like my first my first band ska you get yeah ska band wow and did, were you guys taking it pretty seriously i mean as seriously as you can take it in high school sure um but like playing yeah. local shows and and doing that type thing yeah playing local shows um but i mean we were dedicated we practiced almost every day after school and we we're all just kind of like best friends. Um, and a lot of us are still friends and um, live in LA together. Oh, wow. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, then how did you get into songwriting? Uh, so I had a friend who was actually in the ska band, um, uh -huh. this guy, Amar Malik. And he, he started getting into it um, after college. And we, so another another friend who played in the ska band, this guy David Silberstein, um, who's now my manager on the pop side, um, he did an internship in Nashville, I believe, at Warner Chapel when okay. when he was going to college, and so he kind of got introduced to the world, and then was managing Amar and got Amar in like a few sessions and Amar just ended up kind of like taking off like a rocket and got a song on the radio, which led to a publishing deal. And um, I was like kind of still in school, like playing in bands, not really knowing what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, and eventually started writing with Amar. And then he was making the move out to LA and was like yeah you should come and give it a shot and so slowly but surely i i made my way into the the strange world that is pop music <laughs> so it was mainly through through amar that kind of got you in the doors here in, in, in yeah LA? amar amar and david uh my manager okay so you said he wrote a, and he got in because he wrote a song that ended up landing on the radio Right, this song called Stereo Hearts. Um, oh, yeah. Gym Class Heroes, Adam Levine. Yeah, okay. And then so so then like the the larger connection into it was this producer, Benny Blanco. Oh, sure, okay. Yeah, so he's from our town as well. Okay. 
And so I, I remember him from like basketball camp when I was like a kid. Really? Um, oh, so you've known him for that long? Yeah, I've known him for a really long time. Um, wow. I don't like, I don't know if he remembers me, but he was kind of just like, he would like go around the camp and just like cipher with people and just like start rapping. He was like always a character. Um, but so, so David, my manager was, was friends, like good friends with Benny. And okay. then I guess David sent the song Stereo Hearts that Amar did to Benny. And Benny was like, this is a hit, like, get him our lawyer like that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah yeah and then it it kind of happened like that wow that's crazy so do you know like uh baby fuzz yeah yeah okay so i had him on the podcast too and he was he helped write uh that song as well yeah stereo hearts he was all a part of that same world how cool yeah it's crazy i met um baby fuzz probably like nine or ten years ago in virginia really um, yeah, because he came down to do a session with Amar. Okay. And then now we've since been like kind of reconnected just through Model Child and through his band, like, because we're kind of in, in a similar world. Yeah, because he's, he's also a song. Yeah, he, was, he writes for other people and then he kind of started exactly. his, his own solo thing now as well. Exactly. But how cool. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So that's kind of how you got into the, into the rooms, but now you're, you were writing with like, tell me about meeting like Sean Mendez and you've written for James Blunt and like all these big name people. Like you obviously had to show your, you know, that you're, you know what you're doing. Like, tell me yeah. about that. Yeah. Um, kind of, I mean, my first cut, uh, which became a single was with James Blunt. Um, so how I think it worked, I'm not quite sure. I think Amar was actually supposed to have a session with James. Oh. Um, and we, so we had the same manager and, um, Amar and I were actually like living together with a bunch of other friends from Virginia in Venice. Um, and so there was a studio at the house and David, my manager was just like, hey, why don't we like throw in Danny and like somehow convince the label into letting me work with James. <laughs> and I was like, I was so nervous. I like wrote three different hooks um, and played him like one of them when I got to the session and he was like, yeah, let's like work off of that. And then so we wrote the song and it ended up being a single um, and so that kind of led to a publishing deal. And um, yeah, I guess it's, it's like little by little things kind of start adding up mm -hmm. with, with Sean uh, stitches was like an outside song that I wrote that I co-wrote and it was pitched to Island records and their Sean's a and R uh, really liked the song and then I guess Sean liked it and then when Sean cut the song I went to the studio and met him um, and that's kind of how that relationship started and the, but that was like on his early record right wasn't that his like first hit yeah yeah so that was his first <laughs> hit I, wow. think, I think it was like the fourth single if if um, I'm correct oh, okay um, so it was yeah I mean that that was kind of a freakish kind of kind of song yeah I mean wow so you you had written that you said you wrote that with somebody else and it hadn't you just guys just wrote the song and then pitched it to Island just as a song that maybe somebody would want yeah yeah well I think let's see my my other manager um Jeremy Levin he sent me he was like yeah there's this new kid um signed to Island Records like they think he's super talented, um, kind of in the acoustic singer songwriter -y pop realm. Um, let me know if there's anything you think might work for him. And then I think like the week prior or a few days prior, we had written Stitches and I was like, oh, I think this might work. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really crazy. Was it wild hearing it on the radio and stuff the first time? It was, it was bizarre. 
it's like, yeah, I still don't quite know what to make of it. Um, some, <laughs> some, I don't know. It's just, it's really weird. And um, then you, I'm sure you got like a gold re- or platinum record for that one. Yeah, my my manager actually brought over some like plaque that he's had for for a while. But yeah, it was it was a big song. Yeah, that's awesome. So that yeah. led into more things like the Nick Jonas thing. Was that after you had it had that so, connection happen? Yeah, so Nick Jonas, um that was before uh, Oh, that was before Sean Mendez. Yeah, I think, yeah, that, that Chains came out before the Sean song. Um, okay. Which is. Um, which Chains one that you wrote with him or is that similar to, to what happened with Stitches? That, that was the same thing. That was just like an outside song. Okay. But James, when you wrote the song with James Blunt, that was like you sat down with him and actually. Yeah, we sat down. Wrote, with him. He's, wrote, he's an amazing writer and we, we continue working to this day. It's yeah, it's crazy. I've known him for like eight years now. That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. So how well, was is it different or is it is it more fun to sit down with somebody like him and, and write with him or like pitch a song that you already have done? You know what I mean? I think I think it depends on the artist. Uh huh. Um, I mean, some some people know what they want to say and um and i have chemistry with them and it can just kind of happen naturally Mm -hmm. um that's that's always the best when you know the artist you know has a concept or is inspired by something or has Mm -hmm. some kind of direction and then you can help them kind of weave to what would become the song exactly yeah i um I try to like at this point I try to think about it as just just kind of helping facilitate them mm-hmm. and like yeah molding and kind of sculpting things they say or you know coming in where I see fit and never never trying to step on the artist's toes or anything but um just trying to help them get the best song possible and bringing their their vision into fruition yeah yeah, because I know there are certain artists that will that do enjoy doing that, like sitting down and, and write. Like Baby Fuzz was telling me, like sit, like writing with like Adam Lambert, like he wrote with him and sat down, but then he wrote with, it, well, like that Stereo Hearts song, for example, like uh-huh. that was just written, like he had just written the hook with his other his other producer friend at the time. So yeah, and like yeah. I saw you wrote with like, or you wrote a song for Britney Spears. She was telling me that's similar. That's, he said that she's similar. Where was that a song that you just finished and pitched to her, or or did you get to yeah. write with her? No, that, that was an outside song. Yeah. Yeah. So he was telling me the difference. So it seems like you have a similar, similar story with certain songs where you you'd either write them outside and then they get picked up, or like with James Blunt, you sat down and and you write with him directly. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's cool. It's kind of, it's kind of. Like I, I enjoy, I enjoy both for different reasons where, um, I mean, if you're writing with another writer and another producer, you can just kind of do whatever you want to do that day. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, and you're not, you're not beholden to, you know, the style or if the artist is like, ah, I don't know. I don't know if I would say it, say that or say it that way. Right. There's a lot more freedom in, in the room when you're just collaborating with another writer, another producer. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then, but then, yeah, it's great. I mean, like, for example, uh, Jesse Ware, I worked a lot with her on her latest album. Um, and we've just ended up becoming like really good friends and we made a disco album and I had, you know, never really written disco before. Sure. I had like some experience writing dance music, but it was cool to kind of step into that world and, um, you know, try my hand at, at that and um, super fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cause you got to, you get to kind of jump into different genres that way with, with writing for other people. That's pretty cool. 
Exactly. Yeah. And I then I noticed with your new stuff, it's pretty it's it's amazing. I I love it. It's like it's oh, kind of got the more punk rock sound to it. Yeah, yeah. And I noticed behind you you have like a Dead Kennedy Circle Jerks poster and like uh yeah. Sex Pistols back there. <laughs> Some of it's glared out. I can't quite see it. But oh, yeah. um yeah, but you got <laughs> so it's it's interesting coming from like I mean, obviously it looks like you like punk and yep. then writing songs for for people that are not punk <laughs> that's like do you like tell me about that like did you always know that like do you like punk and then it just you can just it's easier for you to write these pop songs um god i mean i think it kind of comes from just being a music fan in general mm -hmm. like i i i don't discriminate about any style or genre or like i i just love all kinds of music mm -hmm. um and so i think you know starting with trombone and being a part of the classical symphonic kind of zone and then mm -hmm. joining a ska band and and then i mean kind of the the biggest hurdle was pop i would say mm -hmm. um, before that i was really into like the new york or I mean, not just New York, but um, kind of the indie scene, mm -hmm. like Grizzly Bear, uh, Dirty Projectors, Animal Collective, mm -hmm. um, Yeah, Yeah, Yeah's, TV on the radio, just to name a few. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just kind of the new indie sound. And, and then going into like listening to Top 40, and hearing what my friend Amar was was doing, and I was like, "Oh, like it's a job to like write songs for other people," mm -hmm. and it felt like I needed to almost learn a new language, in a way. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of pop songs you start you start at the chorus and have like a concept, and you want like a strong title. Um, obviously there are no rules to any of this, but like, that's kind of typically what you do mm -hmm. and then kind of work backwards. And I just had no experience with that. I would always be like, first verse, here we go. <laughs> right, um, right. And so it, it kind of like shattered a lot of my preconceived ideas about what a song can be, what the writing process is like. Mm -hmm. um I feel like before I wrote a little more abstract um like chord what or more, maybe more chord changes like yeah it like my music before wasn't wasn't very pop it wasn't as hooky um there wasn't as much to kind of like latch on to at the end mm -hmm. of the song. Um, and so it was definitely a bit of a hurdle to kind of like develop the vocabulary to write a pop song, mm -hmm. um, if that makes sense. No, yeah, it, it does. I've always been told that writing pop music is the hardest. Like it's because it sounds so easy and simplistic, but like the, making it sound easy and simplistic is like the hardest yeah. thing ever <laughs> yeah no com completely and like uh i feel i feel like like after writing it long enough um and kind of developing the fundamentals i don't know if that's the right word but um like then you can start to improvise and speak more fluently in in your own and use your own creativity mm -hmm. um within pop music and so i feel like when i first started i was um yeah i was trying to write a pop song i was trying mm -hmm. to like write what i thought was catchy or what i thought was on the radio or what i thought would work on the radio but then once you find your voice um it it gets a lot easier from mm. there. Um, like, for example, like your songs for Model Child, like starting Model Child, 
um, mm-hmm. were those songs that you had written like after you decided, okay, I want to start my own project or were they songs that maybe you had that you were like going to pitch and you're like, yeah, you know what? I think this, I want to keep this one for myself. Did you have any of those songs or did you start fresh? Um, so I've, I've always started fresh with okay. model child stuff. Okay. And what, what, um, what made you decide you wanted to start that and do your own thing? Um, so that was actually kind of, kind of my intention going into pop writing. Um, mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, like I'll do it for like a couple years and, you know, hopefully make some connections and get, hopefully make some money, get a song on the radio um, right. to, to give me the ability to, you know, do what I really want to do, be an artist. Um, and then it, you know, I started probably working on the project maybe five years in to write oh. songs. Okay. Yeah. And so it took a lot longer and, um, and now I, I, I love being a writer and mm-hmm. I, it's, it's just, it's a totally different thing. Um, and it's something I, I want to continue to do because I feel like both kind of inform the other, the artist side and the writer side. Mm-hmm. And then, so, t- well, you just started putting out music um, recently, right? For the, for Model Child? Yeah, fairly, fairly recently. When did you just like, what was the minute or moment that you're like, you know, I'm going to start putting stuff out. Like, was there a moment that you decided that? Um, let's see. I mean, it, the, the project has gone through different, different forms. Um, I was kind of producing a lot more when it first started mm-hmm. and doing was almost electronic slash like kind of experimental electronic like burial um meets like tom york or something okay um and so i was in that zone for a long time and then eventually i i i just like i wasn't feeling inspired by guitar for the longest time Mm -hmm. and then i had the the melody for uh the song Strawberry Bowl. Mm-hmm. And and I actually, I, now that I think of it, I tried to use the melody in a pop session. And I was like, oh, like, you know, what about this kind of thing? And it just didn't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. And then I, w- I was like writing and the melody popped into my head again. It was something I kept coming back to. Um, and so I, I picked up a guitar and wrote the song and then demoed it. And that was the first time I had written like a, a very guitar driven song um, for for Model Child. And I was like, okay, this like, this finally feels like the right thing right now. Okay. And that reinvigorated my, my love of guitar. Oh, okay. And then that's kind of why you started really pursuing what what you were doing with model child because it'll feel like the songs that are up there all have guitar like heavy guitar yeah yeah they they do it um yeah i felt it just felt right all of a sudden um and i was using my songwriting chops um i i i definitely think writing with other people greatly informed this project Mm -hmm. and was the most recent one you just put out um is called drain me that's the most recent song yeah okay and then this is all going to be part of a a a full record yep okay so and that's dropout and that's coming out in october yep okay tell me about the record yeah so i just kind of started demoing songs as i went um, I'm like constantly leaving voice notes on my phone. And so <laughs> I collected enough where I was like, just started demoing a bunch. Um, and then I, I have like, I consider myself more of a, a writer singer than a, uh, producer. So 
I knew I wanted to bring in another person and I had just made friends with this guy, Pat Morrissey, who, um, who I met in New York and through a mutual friend. And we, we just kind of went to Big Bear, um, which is like, you know, two hours outside of LA and started yeah. doing the songs. Oh, you and, guys did that in Big Bear, huh? Yeah. Is there like a studio there or you just brought your own like little setup? Just our own little setup. Okay. And so we did, we did like a trip out there and then the rest of it was, was all done in LA. Um, but yeah, I feel like the record, a lot of it, it feels, it feels kind of nostalgic. A lot of the songs, um, lyrically. And I feel like I touch on some, you know, like teenage years and like early adulthood kind of stuff and kind of write a passage, um, come coming into oneself sort mm -hmm. of territory. Um, that's, that's a piece of it. Um, you know, drain me is kind of like a swaggier, sexier side. Um, but they're, I don't know. It's, the, I feel like I hit on a lot of different stuff in, in the record. Um, but there is that sort of like punky, grungy thread through it, I would say. And have you, have you thought of doing, like, are you going to go out and perform as, as Model Child? And like, have you booked any shows? I mean, obviously not now, but had you played live prior as Model Child? Yeah. Um, so I've, played god probably like the past year and a half or so as oh Monica. really out, okay. yeah out here in LA um but I don't know I I wish I wish we could go on tour and like do the whole thing but uh -huh. fortunately it's just not possible right now yeah and yeah obviously yeah. yeah yeah um obviously but um uh, have you done touring and stuff I mean I know you're a, a songwriter like you you sit down and have these writing sessions but do you uh, like do you have a lot of experience as like a, you know, live performer? So, I mean, before I got into the pop music stuff, I performed a lot back right, in with, Virginia. With the other bands and stuff you're in. Yeah. And we did, I mean, we did one kind of like week long tour or something just through like bumfuck Virginia. Um, <laughs> yeah. But other than that, like, no, just kind of playing one-off shows in LA. Um, and so that, that was something I was really looking forward to. Um, thank you, COVID. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, <laughs> oh, so you were, you were gonna, you already had like something planned as far as the tour went with, with the new record? We, we didn't have like solid dates planned out. Oh, sure. Anything, but, but it was something we were thinking of doing like late fall or something when the record's out. Mm-hmm. What about like live streams or anything like that? How do you feel about doing those? I think I'm going to do some live streams depending on what it is. Um, yeah. I want to like, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm trying to think of ways to be creative with it. You know, it's, yeah. it's great to like see somebody sit on a couch and play it strum an acoustic guitar and play um which i mean don't get me wrong that's great but uh like <laughs> it's getting old <laughs> yeah, yeah six months later it's not yeah <laughs> what, like watching this through your phone like with the tiny speaker yeah but but yeah i want i want to like think of some creative ways to to get past the hurdle of not being able to like be in front of actual human beings. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What about like music videos and stuff? Have you been able to put anything together while you're in quarantine? Have you been able to do any writing sessions? What do you? This producer, Rusty Santos, um, is has been staying and staying at my place, and we've been like writing a bunch of new material. And so we're kind of quarantining together, but it's been difficult. I'm doing some like some Zoom sessions with people as far as the writing thing goes. Um, 
I shot a video with a very small crew and everyone was like, you know, wearing masks and super conscious of everything. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's hard to kind of, to get over all these hurdles, but I'm trying to make it work in the, the safest, healthiest way possible. Yeah, I know. This is, this is wild. It's, I can't believe it's still like happening. You know, it's almost nine months. I mean, we're almost into September. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. Super crazy. And yeah. it doesn't, doesn't sound like it's going to end anytime soon. I know. It's so unfortunate. I mean, I remember when, when Coachella got canceled, it was like, October is going to be the due, you know, and now it's like almost October and there's no yeah. end in sight. <laughs> we'll see what happens. But. Yeah, man. Crazy. Well, Danny, thank you so much for talking with me today. I really, really appreciate your time. Yeah, it was great talking. I have one more question for you. I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Advice for aspiring artists. Let's see. Um, I would say, I would say make art for yourself um, and, you know, do it, do it for the love of it and not for being successful or any of that stuff. In the end, that's not like the thing that really matters. Just follow your heart. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, like, yeah. I make, love it. Make what you love. Bring me the best world.